perceiveth the mark of his name. In verse 12, we said, is an antidote uh, not to have to live this life in fear because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. God is telling us that you don't need to be concerned about um, receiving the mark and being tricked or deceived because the antidote not to receive it is found, we said, in verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints or the believers, the blood wash, Holy Ghost, fire baptized, filled, children of God. Here are they that do two things. They keep the commandments of God, which we'll discuss in a moment, and they have the faith of Jesus. They believe that by Christ and Christ alone we're saved. They believe that only through his blood or sins washed away. They believe that in his name we're, we're redeemed, we've been brought with the price, and that one day he's coming to take us back to glory. I wish I could get an amen off that. Amen. But also the believer, it says that they do two things. They have the faith of Christ and his gifts and all the wonderful things that the Spirit of God offers. But they also keep the commandments of God. Why is that important? Again, uh, we, got, we got into it some on some of the prior studies or some of the prior scriptures we just gave, and we'll elaborate a little bit more as we go through. Um, any questions before we continue on with what's the mark? And again, this is an open seminar. It's a different seminar because we offer the opportunity to ask questions as much as you want. If it's something contrary to what um, anyone believes to be the word of God, um, this is a very relaxed spiritual setting and atmosphere. We don't want anyone agreeing for the sake of agreeing. I gave my word yesterday, I'll give it today. If I, at one moment, profess anything that is not scripturally or doctrinally sound, I please ask anyone in the building to say, that is not Bible truth. Please show me in the word of God where it says X, and I promise one thing, that we will. Amen. If I can't confirm and concur anything I say through scripture, I ask you to do one thing. Please walk out and leave this particular seminar because I'm not teaching truth. And if a teacher, any Amen. teacher standing before you Amen. lie and can't confirm what they're saying through the word of God, that is a teacher you want to run from as quickly as you can. So if I can't answer your question through scripture, please pack up and run from this building as fast as you can. If you have something that you disagree with, again, raise your hand and say, I disagree respectfully. Let's go back to the text and elaborate a little bit more. And we'll take the time until we get it right. Amen? Amen. That's the type of setting we have here. Um, Lady Jervy, please um, read the important vocabulary over the next section, which we're dealing with the mark of the beast today. And she will now read what is a mark according to Strong's Concordance. Mark, a scratch of etching, stamp as a badge of servitude, or sculpted figure, Strong's Concordance reference 5, 4, 80. Um, Webster's Third International Dictionary and Abridged, something placed or set to ser service as a guide or to indicate position, a visible sign as a badge or sign of honor, rank, office, or stigma assumed by or put on a person. Seal, a signet, the stamp impressed as a mark of privacy or genuineness. Strong's Concordance reference 4973. Webster's Third International Dictionary Unabridged, something that confirms, ratifies, or makes secure, something that gives a character to a person such that he may be recognized as belonging to an indicated agency. Okay, the reason why that was important because, um, again, with this whole issue of end time prophecy that the Bible is saying in Revelation 14, he wants proclaimed everywhere, there's a mark of the beast which is going to bring... Um, you know, an unfortunate result to the believers and unbelievers worldwide, then there's the seal of God which protects us and seals us into the day of redemption where we're excluded from what Revelation 14 said would be a portion. And why we read the difference between a mark and a seal out of the Strong's Concordance, which uh, some of you may have, that is a, a Bible dictionary which breaks the word down in Hebrew Old Testament, Greek New Testament, and we also provided uh, Webster's definitions. Um, now let's go on to page 33. Uh, please, ladies, Zerby, uh, commence reading uh, note one. Page 33. 
Note one, the seal of God. The king's seal bears the king's name, title, and the dominion in which he rules. Revelation 9, 4 speaks of the seal of God being in the foreheads of his people. Mark, Revelation 9, 4. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Okay, so before we go any further, I want to make sure that you understand. Again, this being a very difficult topic uh, for the body of Christ to understand, even more so to receive and walk in it. Um, what she read, she read it, you know, rather quickly, because I mean, she understand it, she heard it before. I need at least two people, or if one person can paraphrase very quickly, um, the significance of being sealed by God. Because those that received the mark, the Bible said what in Revelation 14? Someone paraphrase for me, anyone. Those that received the mark of the beast, paraphrase it in your own words. Uh, drink, uh, a, uh, basically a pure version of God's wrath. Okay, those that received the mark. Yeah. What she just read in Revelation 9, 4, the Bible said those that are sealed, Contrary to what you just said, or what? Someone else. If you can just paraphrase what she read, that little cash in Revelation 9 for in your own words. Your own words. Put in your own words. Anyone? Are excluded. Are excluded. So if you're sealed, you're excluded. If you receive the mark, then there's pain, punishment. Um, yeah. Other words, we don't even want to go into, but again, I stand before you thanking God because, again, uh, he has not given us a spirit of, of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And I believe by faith and know that not just myself, but uh, you guys and those, again, that will be watching on the World Wide Web uh, very soon uh, will be sealed once this world comes to an end. Uh, dealing with, uh, before we go into that, it's the seal of God which we're going to come back to in note one. In any end time, uh, or I'm going to say, uh, old passages of scripture and texts in, uh, in Ezra and other places, which we will get to uh, later <coughs> on, and I'm actually going to fast forward. We're going to come to this on page 40. So when we get to page 40, um, Evangelist Judy, remind me that I already covered what I'm about to read now, which is in uh, Ezra chapter 1, verse 1. And if I was thinking, we would have moved this up to this section right here. I'm happy to read Ezra chapter 1, verse 1. And again, I was saying, if, if I was thinking... Um, I uh, would move this around some, but it's important to establish what we read and provide scripture behind it immediately. And the reason I'm going to Ezra 1 and 1 is to confirm that the seal of any seal, any king, it has to bear the king's name, his title, and the dominion in which he rules. I'm talking about that's you know, King Nebuchadnezzar, King Ezra, any of the kings, Old Testament, present kings, now he has a seal on his ring. And when he stamps something, it has to have those, those, those three qualities. His name, his title, and dominion in which he rules. It's important that you remember that. Um, you got Ezra 1 and 1? Yes. Yes. Okay. Read that for us, please. Amen. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, and made and that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, The Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him right, right, right. and a house of, at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to ask uh, uh, someone in the back, for those in case you couldn't hear, to read it clearly and to make sure that is on the recording. Someone in, from the mid middle section to the back, read that Ezra chapter 1, verse 1 for me again, if you can. 
Amen. 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 And the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, to make a proclamation throughout his realm and to put it in writing. Okay, so his name was the king, Cyrus. Um, his office, he was a king. And the territory in which he ruled was Persia. That's just an example, again, that a, a, a seal of a king and the deal with the seal of God, same thing. It has to contain those three components. The name, the, the title, and the office in which they rule. We're dealing with the seal. Any questions regarding that? No. Okay. A seal. She's going to read for us now Exodus chapter uh, 20, verses 10 and 11. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, and the sea, and all that them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Okay, um, I will be coming back to this in a moment because just dropping out there and putting an atmosphere of what the actual seal of God is, um, we're mentioning it right here, but how does this equate to what we're saying? We'll get to that on page, um, also page 41, 41 through 41, but now we're just mentioning everything that we're about to cover over the next like six or seven pages, but any questions on this at this time? None? We'll get back, we get back to how the seal equates to this equation um, being found in Exodus 20, chapter 10 and 11. Uh, something that's going to be definitely uh, inspiring, and in some instances maybe awe-inspiring to the believer. Okay, uh, note two, please. What is the mark of the beast? Here are some direct quotes by, Catholic, by the Catholic Church from Catholic authorities and portray the feelings and beliefs of those in control of this worldwide church. More information will be found in reference given. This statement is in reference to the church leadership who understand the history and future of this church. Okay, now, now before she reads, quotes from the Catholic Church, get those that missed the study yesterday, which um, once we finish these last couple pages, um, I'm going to either dismiss the ones that were here yesterday. If they choose to stay around, they can. And then we may have about maybe 25, 30 minutes towards the end where I'm going to give you some cliff notes on identifying that the beast is none other than the Roman Catholic Church. It's the papacy itself, a beast in Bible prophecy, which we'll get into, we discussed yesterday, is nothing more than a kingdom or world power. In Revelation chapter 7, um, uh, like verses like 17, 18, like verse 23, which we'll read later, it says that the fourth beast or the second beast is a specific kingdom. We identify through world history, we identify through a walk through the word of God that the beast that it's talking about is the Roman Catholic Church, established again the religious organization of the Papacy. Now, you know, again, we'll confirm our promise, you know, at a later study very soon, a little bit today. So what she's about to read now is quotes because we established that yesterday. If it is the Roman Catholic Church that we confirm unequivocally, what if they are the beasts? which I'm saying if now because we haven't proven it to you yet, then what is this specific organization stating is their mark of authority? You know, again, people think a beast is everything but what it actually is. Now, we're going to read some quotes from their material stating that our mark of authority is this. You know, we proclaim to be higher than the scriptures itself because we have done X. And 90% of the churches worldwide are following our lead, and they think that they're not because, you know, different twists have been put on different, you know, texts in the word. But actuality, they're going to say point blank. We changed it. We did this, and the world is following. And then that's what's ultimately what we're going to read. I'm giving you information before you she even reads it, is how we're going to ultimately, ultimately get to what is the mark of the beast, which translates... Which kingdom of the world 
proclaims is their mark of authority as far as how they alter the word of God. If therefore the Catholic Church also claims the right of dogmatic intolerance with regard to her teaching,